now, uh, in uh, December 21, 2020, we're going to move for 200 years towards air. And air is artificial intelligence, air is science, air is communities, air is democracy, air is all about innovation, fraternity of humanity. So we're moving from earthbound energy to air. Whatever happens to us at that time is very significant. It's magnified. So the fact that we have the grand conjunction every 20 years is very rare. The fact that it's moving once every 200 years from one element to the other, very rare. And the fact that it's happening on winter solstice is extremely rare. So we are heading towards a change of energy. You can already start feeling it, I think, after the election here in the United States. Even in 2020, with the pandemic, we noticed that we are starting to wean ourselves off petroleum, oil, gas, oil and gas prices went down. In the other sense, everything to do with innovation, technology. Think about the miracle of the vaccines that we're now seeing. He was a Jewish astrologer who worked, uh, who was from Persia, but he worked a lot with uh, Abu Jafar al-Mansur. He's the one that actually inaugurated Baghdad. He basically thought about a startup, who started a new city. So he invited the three most uh, prominent astrologers at that time, one of them was Masalai ibn Atari, to decide when to inaugurate that city. And they decided to call it Baghdad, which means the gateway of peace or the city of peace. And that uh, astrologer, Mashallah, was very famous for his work with uh, astrolabs and mathematics. He was translated to many languages. He was a very prominent writer at that time. And he noticed that the grand conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter that happens every 20 years happens in such a precise way that he postulated that history is governed by these conjunctions. And then he noticed that every 200 years, the element where that grand conjunction happens changes. Everything is very, very, very mathematical in a sense. 1400 is a very similar situation, 1405 to what's happening now, which is the onset or the beginning of the Renaissance. Um, we see it moving, I mean, whenever we had the air in the uh, uh, conjunction, it brought innovation, it brought a certain kind of Renaissance, whether the Renaissance is mystical or the Renaissance is scientific or the Renaissance is any other form, but it is a re-emerging of new things. For example, last time Saturn was in Aquarius were the riots uh, in Los Angeles. At the time before, it was the speech of I have a dream. Masala's uh, conclusion is that Jupiter-Saturn conjunction was indeed uh, the Beit Lechem um, or the Star of David or the prophecy of the scepter. It's basically like archaeology. Do you have a story? And the story is from uh, Numbers 24, 17. It says uh, in that prophecy that I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not nigh. That there shall come a star out of Jacob and the scepter shall rise out of Israel. That was a story that came up. The reason why is because around that time, one of the most uh, famous genre of communication or stories was apocalyptic. Everybody was waiting for the end of the world. So Christianity basically came out of those uh, fertile ground of expecting of the end of the world or the rise of the king of the uh, or the messiah you have to remember the gospel of matthew was written around 80 90 ce which is about 50 to 60 years after jesus died two generations after he was born so it's only mentioned in matthew that there was three magis that were coming from the east and they followed an eastern uh, star they followed the star back to bethlehem they found the place where jesus supposedly was born and they gave the gifts and then they had a dream that told them not to go back to herod and tell them where uh, the baby was, but to go back to their own uh, place. A lot of research was done lately about trying to identify if was there any kind of astronomical situation in that time and, and if you can pinpoint it to a certain date. So what they did is they did find that there was an occultation of Jupiter in Aries with Saturn conjunction uh, and all of, the, all of the things that we know from the ancient world that depicted a birth of a special king. So we know, for example, planets have to be exalted. For example, the sun in Aries is exalted. Venus in Pisces is exalted. Certain situations in astrology that will say this is a very important person being born. And they also knew that Judea at that time was considered to be an Aries. 
We know that from coins that were uh, minted around that time that Judea became part of the Roman Empire officially. So they calculated that if you look at all these phenomena, including the Grand Conjunction in Aries, the Ram, then they, discover, they discovered it to actually be April 17 in the year 6 BCE. So what's happening in December 25, that according to the Julian calendar that was used back then, that was the solstice, is the date of birth of all the gods of light. So around the fourth century after Christ, so we're talking about 350 or so, that's when the church decided, you know what, you can't beat them, join them. They all insisted the gods were born at that time. Let's move Jesus' birthday to that time. And that's from only from 350 years after Jesus Jesus was born, did they decide that that is the time that we should celebrate Christmas? Traditionally, Aquarius has been associated for thousands of years with humanity. So if there's any sign that is associated with humans or human being, humanitarian work, altruism is Aquarius. If you look at the oldest book in Kabbalah, the Sefer Etzirah, there is a very strong association between the Hebrew letters, the building blocks according to um, the story of creation in Kabbalah, and the zodiac signs. And the letter for Aquarius is Tzaddik. And Tzaddik is the saint. So it is a sign that is striving for sainthood. And when we're all under the influence of Aquarius, which is what's happening to us from December 21, we are going to strive to become or, or embody the letter Tzaddik, which is, of course, Tzedek, which is justice, and um, saintlyhood. Okay.